Hey y'all, how are you? Welcome back. Jackson from the Haskell here. So the quick announcement is the video coming after this on the 27th. We're talking about HBO's new content, which is really cool. Um, and that this video coming on the 26th, which we're talking about right now. Um, we're talking about Tales from the Crypt Season 3. I'm pleased to announce it's Season 4. Um... will be in September 5th, which is really cool, and here we go, um, I just want to say thank you guys for your support for the first two episodes, uh, we're going to make a small change, we're not really going over every actor, just actors I kind of recognize, for this, because the last episode was 15 minutes, and I don't want that happening, so, okay, we have the first episode in season 3 is Love to Death, it was Source of Tales in Crypt number 25, it was directed by Tom Makewitz and written by Joe Mean and John Makewitz, which is cool. Um, June 15th, 1991, Tom Makewitz worked on the James Bond films, he was a writer for those, which is cool. And he also worked in Superman, the movie, and the television show Heart to Heart, which is great, and he was the son of Joseph Minowitz, Minkiewicz, and John Minkiewicz, he was an executive producer for House of Cards and Bosch. He also co-created Series of Street and has written for shows such as The House MD, but it's hot about the last plot for his first episode. As aspiring screenwriter, Edward Foster, played by Andrew McCarthy, has a crush on his neighbor, and aspiring actress Miranda Singer, after falling to get, feeling to get, Miranda doesn't notice him, Edward finally gains her affection, a potion given to him by his woman-hating landlord, David Hemmings. Eventually, Edward begins to regret his choice after Miranda's newfound obsession with him becomes too much for him to handle. Also, starring Kathleen Freeman as the next door neighbor. Andrew McCarthy, member of the Rat Pack, um, films such as Weekend at Bernie's, Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, and Mannequin, which is cool. Um, Miranda, Mario Hemingway plays Miranda Singer, Lipstick, and Manhattan, which is cool. David Hemming is a British actor from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I don't really know him, but just really iconic. Then Kathleen Freeman, first time Miranda's mentioning her, she played films in over 50 years. From 1948 or so on, which is crazy. Next episode is Carry On Death. Um, it's Taurus's shock suspense, shock suspense stories. Number nine, it was directed and written by Richard D. Souza. Richard D. Souza worked on things such writing such things such as 40 Hours, Die Hard, and the sequel Hudson Hawk, Judge Shred, Not Running Man, Commando, which is really cool. Um, June 15th, 1991, also. Earl Raymond Diggs, played by Car Kyle McLachlan. The murderer has recently escaped prison, is running for a Mexican border. He is pursued by a state trooper, George D. Hale, played by George D. Hale, but ends up slapping the cuffs on him. Diggs manages to kill the trooper, but the trooper manages to swallow the key before dying, with no other options to remove the cuffs. Diggs is forced into the drag the trooper's corpse across the freedom to the desert to freedom, all being stopped by a hungry vulture. Kyle McClacken. Of course, I'm already mentioning him. Firewalk. Sorry. Firewalk with me. He was Gil Cooper in Twin Peaks, which is cool. He was in Blue Velvet. He was in The Doors, Showgirls, Hidden, The Flintstones from 1994. And he played Riley's dad in both Inside Out films. And George D. Hale, I've never really heard of, sadly. Uh, next film is a Trap. From Chalk Suspense Stories, number 18. Written, directed by Michael J. Fox and written by Scott Alexander. I don't really know Scott Alexander, but he made a lot of biopics like The People vs. O.J. Simpson, 
I believe was one of them. American Crime Story, People vs. Larry King, Ed Wood. But yeah, I don't know. Michael J. Fox, really famous actor. Um, Alex P. Key and Family Ties, he was Marty McFly in Back to the Future films. To school. Uh, Lou Paloma, played by Bruce McGill. An obnoxious, egotistical, mean spirited deadbeat who cannot hold down a job is horribly intent and is both unfaithful and abusive verbally and physically to his wife, played by Irene, played by uh, Terry Gar. Ropes her and her brother, played by and his brother Bruno, Billy, played by Bruno Kirby, into a plan to fake his own death, collect his life insurance money, escape to a new life in Rio de Janeiro. Unfortunately, Lou is unaware about both his long suffering wife and brother who develop an attraction to each other are plans to double cross him. And we have um, Michael J. Fox plays the prosecutor also. And James Tolkien plays a policeman investigating the murder scene. Um, Lou McGill kind of went on after Insider Ali Collateral. He also knew D Day in John Landis' Animal House. Dean Farley and my cousin Vinny, which is really cool. Terry Gar, for some reason, mentioning her. She's been here over 140 things. Film and TV, which is cool. Billy, played by Bruno Kirby. City Slickers, when Harry met Sally. Good Morning Vietnam, both Godfather Part 2 and Toddy Roscoe. Also plays Reginald Stout and Stuart Little. Um, I already mentioned Michael J. Fox, but James Tolkien. He was also in Back to the Future, where he played Mr. Strickland in Back to the Future 1 and 2. And he appeared in Part 3 as Marshall James Strickland. Ancestor of Mr. Strickland, which is cool. Next up, we have Abracadabra, episode four, which is really cool. Um, I'm just trying to go for these kind of faster because there's a lot. But Abracadabra, um, tales from the group number thirty-seven, as Dead Right, and that was its original name. But they renamed. It was directed by Stephen Hopkins, written by Jimmy Bergshay. June 19th, 1991. Years ago, Carl Fairbanks played by Tony, Tony Golden and his brother Martin played Bo Bridges for their medical students. And Carl played a prank on Martin, was unexpectedly given a stroke and paralyzes one of his hands. In the present day, Carl becomes a successful surgeon. Brass Martin paralyzes pra paralysis, limps into medical research. So Martin gets her friends by injecting Carl with an experimental serum that stops Carl's heart, but keeps his brain alive eventually toward trapping Carl in his own body. Which is cool. Stephen Hawkins, the director. We've seen him for Let's Talk War. Predator 2, he also did Nightmare on 35, which is cool. Um, Tony Goldwyn, really kind of well known actor. First film for him would have been, um, 19, 1986, which is Friday the 13th, part five, 6, Jason Lives, which is cool, and we played Darren. He was also the Carl Brunner, Brewer, Brunner, sorry, and the film Ghost, which is cool. Um, Bo Bridges, he's a married actor. Uh, you would probably might recognize his brother more and Jeff Bridges, which is cool. I don't really recognize any of his works. The next episode, we have Top Billing. Um, Fall of War number 39, directed by Todd Holland and written by Miles Berkowitz, June 26, 1991. Um, Todd Holland, over 50 episodes of Larry and Sanders show. Around 25 episodes of Malcolm in the Middle, and did a thing called The, the Wizard from 88-89. But yeah, Barry Bly, played by John Lovitz, a struggling actor with doll and grab appearance, is fired. Um, he's fired by his agent, dumped by his girlfriend, and evicted from his apartment. 
just before Barry attempts to receive the lead role in a strange production of Hamlet, but is turned down by the director, Nelson Howell, played by John Aston, who instead gives him a part his handsome rival, Wilton Robbins, played by Bruce Parks Leitner. In a rage, Barry kills Linton to get the part on his cover, but he actually, in the literal sense, plays a part of a long deceased York. I like this episode, it has a great ending. Um, John Lovitz kind of went on for a lot of stuff, I would say. He was in, I remember SNL for, um, for five years, from 85 to 90. Also, a show called The Critic, where he played Jay, Burge, Jay Sherman. Fun fact, John uh, Lovitz played a lot of roles in The Simpsons, too. 20 episodes, most of his role probably would be a lot of guest stars. Like, play Jay Sherman in a couple episodes of Simpsons. Um, Sean Astin, really well known actor. Um, he's really famous for one role in particular, which I guess would be Gomez Adams in the Adams Family 64 66. Winton Robbins, played by Bruce Box Leitner. Bruce Box Leitner, um, how the glass was one, bring him back alive, Scarecrow, and this is King. Babylon 5. He was also in the uh, original Tron, which is cool. Uh, Paul Bennett. Number of Painter on Sesame Street, being 65. He was also Harry Bentley in Jefferson's. Um, Kimmy Robertson played DC Moran in Twin Peaks in the film The Last American Virgin. Louise Fletcher, uh, Nurse Ratched. And one flew over cuckoo nest, which is cool. We have Sandra Bernhardt. I don't, I don't recommend any, anything for her. Next up, Dead Wheat uh, comes from Vault of Horrors, number 23. Toby Hooper's director, by A.L. Katz and Gil Adler, are writers. Toby Hooper, really famous director. Um, Eat and Alive would be one of Poltergeist's fun house, but the most famous would have been Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 74. James, or sorry, yeah. And this was July 3rd, 1991. Gilbert Adler is one of the creators for the show, along with others. But, um, Red Buckley, played by James Remar, is a thug with naturally red hair, who offers work for Duvall, John Rice Stacey's, a plantation owner in the Tropical Island, gripped in the Civil War, where he teams up with Duvall's mistress, Catherine, played by Van D, in order to steal Duvall's prized possession, a highly valuable black pearl, and later crosses, later double crosses Catherine, and only be double crossed by the Prince Albert, a mysterious princess, priestess, Whoopi Gould, Gould, uh, Goldberg, versus Mysterious Priestess in this. Um, James Remar, a lot of stuff he's kind of famous for, I would say. Uh, Ajax and the Warriors, Albert Gans in 48 Hours, Doug Schultz in the Cotton Club, Jack Duff in Miracle on 34th Street, Rich Wright in Sex and the City. Um, also known for show Gotham, where he plays Jim Gordon, see it. Dad. Um, Ron Reese Davies, two, kind of famous two franchises. He plays Salah in Indiana Jones, which is cool. But he also plays Gimli in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Vanity, kind of one of them, uh, an actress. Um, was, had a relationship with Prince, that's why people would probably know her. She was in this, and she was also in uh, Friday the 13th the series, which I eventually want to cover. Whoopi Goldberg, not really mentioned, just a lot of stuff. She's been in, she's on The View currently. But yeah. Next one, we have Relic, Relic and the Vampire Sources, Fall 4, number 20. Directed by Elliot Silverstein and written by Carrie Black, July 10th, 1991. Um, Elliot Silverstein, Nightmare Honeymoon, A Man Called Horse, Cat Bayou, The Happening, 
the car from 77. Don no long to with a Malcolm McDowell as a vampire with a conscience. He excused the tradition of killing mortals and set salivating his need for blood by working at the night. Watchman at Blood Bank when Don overdraws on the blood supply that banks blood banks. Owner Mr. Crossway played at George Went, realized that his business is literally being sucked dry and threatens his employees with mass layoffs into blood bankruptcy. The event must return to his old ways in order to plead his embezzlement. Donald tries to solve his quandary by attacking dangerous criminals all while struggling with the romantic advances of the blood clinic secretary, played by Sandra Dickinson, an investigative reporter, played by Paul Gleason, and the Empire Hunter, played by Rupert, Rupert Van Helsing, played by Michael Berryman. Which is cool. Um, Malcolm McDowell, really famous actor, Mick Travis. And Lindsay Anderson's If from 68, Lucky Man from 73, O Britannia Hospital 82, and he's an English actor. And he was also played to Alex in Clockwork Orange. George Went. Kind of went on for one show, I would say. He played Norm Peterson, aka Norm, in Cheers from 82, 1993, which is cool. Um. Dickens, Sandra Dickinson. I've never heard of her. This is really Paul Gleason. All my children in films such as The Breakfast Club, Trading Places, and Die Hard, which is really cool for him. And Michael Berryman. Um, we have seen it for Let's Talk War. I'm pretty sure if that name sounds. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Hills of Eyes. He was in Star Trek. I thought it was Highways to Heaven. I'm trying to think why I would recognize him. Because I... I don't know. I, don't know. I can't think why I recognize him. But just a lot of rolls. Next up, Ezo Kilia. Uh, Fall of Wars, number 31, Mrs. Wars. It was directed by John Harrison and written by Larry Wilson. Uh, we mentioned. I don't know if we mentioned him before, John Harrison. I just want to make sure I'm looking up. He did the 2000 New Year's adaptation of Dune, which is really cool. Don Edward uh, is an actor. The last name 78. He was in Creep Show as a composer. Okay. Tales from Crypt of the Dark Side, where he was a composer and also mm, director. TV. He was a director of the episode of Tales from the Crypt. He also I was a writer for five episodes. Oh, wait, sorry, that's Tales from the Dark Side. And composer for four. If we're talking about Tales from the Crypt, he was a director of two and a writer of three episodes. He also worked on the show Monsters and Nightmare Cafe. And uh, Larry Wilson, we mentioned before. Beetlejuice. Adam Sandley, The Little Vampire, The Year of Santa Claus, which is cool. Jack Craig, played by Tim Roth, uh, an artist, a recovering alcoholic with a temper who could not seem to sell any of his works, met accidentally. Killing a neighbor, finding inspiration, Jack photographs a corpse, paints a scene, and sells a painting to Mel Malcolm Mayflower, played by William Atherton, a collector of morbid artwork who promises to pay him a large sum of money for some of paintings which leads Jack down a dark and dangerous path. So with Mr. Roth right, Pulp Fiction Reservoir Dogs, he's a British actor, part of the Brit Pack. 
the reason I might know, probably didn't know him more so, if anything, he was Emil Blon uh, Blonsky Abomination, which is really cool, uh, aka a Hulk villain in the MCU. Um, William Atherton, Ghostbusters, he's the EPA character in the first two, which is really cool, I was just seeing an iconic character like him. Next, uh, we have Undertaking Parser, which is episode 9, so we're almost done with this season. We have a lot of people. It was directed by Michael Tao and created by Ron Finley, based on Tales of the Crypt number 39, on uh, July 24th, 1991. Jess, Norm, Aaron, and Josh, played by James Marsden, Chuck Scott Fox, Aaron Eisenberg, and Ki Hui Kwan, a group of kids aspiring to be horror filmmakers break into the local mortuary but to see the real dead body that already seems to stumble on a conspiracy of murder and greed over your conversation between the town pharmacist Mr. Grundy played by Graham Jarvis and local mortician Sebastian Esplick played by John Glover realizing that the two have been killing townspeople with poison medicine so they can split the profits of funerals and it's trying to Discover Josh's father, Ki Kui Hon, I believe, uh, was a victim of Grundy's fame, mid boys plan to expose Grundy and Esplick with Taylor Lawner on him, hoping to film evidence of the murderous dealings. Um, these guys are going to speak really quick. James Marsden is a really up and coming actor. Um, if it's the same guy I'm thinking of, yeah, it is. Um, we've seen him in a couple of stuff. Oh no, that might not be. Oh, I'm thinking of this James Marston, not Jason. But he plays Chester Mc Bad Bad on uh, Fairy Odd Parents, Prince Haku in Spirit of the Way, Max Goof, Attack of the Power of Juju. Hocus Pocus, he was in as Thackeray Banks. I was getting confused with James Marsden. And he only appeared in this episode. Um, it's called Folk, never heard of. Aaron Eisenberg um, plays Nog on Deep Star Trek Deep Space Nine. School and Ki Kui Han. Um, okay, we have another Indian Jones person here. We have him as playing Short Round in Indian Jones in Temple of Doom. He was also in the Goonies of Theta, which is cool. Graham Jarvis, I've never heard of before as an actor. John Glover, really well known. Daniel Clamp in Gremlins 2, New Batch. Ryan Luther in Smallville, he's also the voice of the Riddler. DC animated universe. Next up, we have Morning Mess, um, Tales from Crypt number 38. Mini Koto was a writer and director, July 31st, 1991. Dale Sweeney, played by Stephen Weber, is a sleazy down as left news reporter, is currently investigating bizarre murders of the homeless. Sweeney seems to cover some murders may be related to grateful, homeless, outcasts, and an to layaway society, ghouls, a mysterious organization whose charitable decade hides a world secret. Also starring Vita Wilson, uh, Abby Walker, and Vincent Shio. Oh. Mini Koto. This may be a first time we're talking about him. Okay. He was an executive producer for the fifth season of Dexter, showrunner for Star Trek Enterprise in the final season, and executive producer for four seasons of 24. So, uh, Steven Weber. He's kind of. He played Brian Hackett, Wings, Wilson Charlie Barkin, and All Dogs. All Dogs Go to Heaven, the series, and voices Jack Torrance in the TV miniseries adaptation of The Shining. 
Rita Wilson, Seattle Volunteers, oh sorry, Volunteers, Sleepless in Seattle, now and then, A Thing You Do, Jingle All The Way, The Story of Us, and She's Married to Tom Hanks. Hallie Walker, Santa Barbara, True Blue, Moon Over Miami, Finch Cervelli, I've never heard of him. Next up, we have Split Second, um, Direct Shock Suspense, Stories Number Four, Source, directed by Russell McKay, written by Richard Christian Matheson. August 7th, 1991, Russell Mukahi. For some reason, you've seen him, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Australian director. Worked with people such as Elton John and Duran Duran, Razorbacks, which is a movie. Richard Matheson, I Am Legend. And he's over 100 short stories of psychological horror and magic realism. I might be thinking of a different person, but if this is the guy I'm thinking of, he, okay, no, it is. Where is it? No, oh, it's a different guy. Wrong one. I've never heard of him before then. I always got him confused with the other more famous Matheson. Talk about that. Um... Liz Kelly played by Michelle Johnson. Uh, a loose but beautiful but loose barmaid. Mary Steve Dixon played by Brian James. Wealthy manager of a lumber camp who provides her comfortable lifestyle. Meyer seems to best hour when Ski becomes violently jealous of anyone who even looks at his new wife. Liz eventually brings him over edge when she brings seducing, seducing another lumberjack, Teddy. Billy Worth, in order to relieve her professional boredom, Michelle Johnson, Jennifer Lyons, and Leon Rio, which is like a cool camera man, and Kim Carlisle, um, Love Boot, which is cool, Brian James, he played Leon Kowalowski on Blade Runner, Southern Comfort, 48 Hours, another 40 Hours, Silverado, Tango and Cash, Red Heat, The Player, and The Fifth Element. He was normally known as an antagonist in films. Bailey Worth. I didn't know for one thing I would say, which he played um, Dwayne in The Lost Boys. That's cool. Next up, we have Deadlock. Shock Spent Stories number 12. That's its source. Directed by Walter Hill and written by Mia Woods and Walter Hill, August 14th, 1991. I'm not going to mention Walter Hill's because we talked about him a couple times. But yeah, Richard Charles McKenzie played by Richard Jordan, a newspaper journalist who has nearly ruined his career after many years of alcoholism. Who has to give up drinking in order to get his old job back. He soon meets a young woman, Vicky, with a Marge Hallenberger. And to begin having a fling with Vicky's influence. Hoping along the way, Charles is offered to drop back as a ring ring. In a murder story, upon hearing the owner of a diner murder his wife in Time's Kitchen, Charles believes he has a story, and later he discovers who his wife is. It was of Richard Hurd and John Polito. We've mentioned John Polito before. Um, home is at Life on the Streets, where he plays Steve Cossetti. I don't know why I mentioned him. Part and Think, Big Lebowski, he was also in. He was in Mimic 2. Oh. Probably a movie that I. Oh, yeah, Mimic 2. That's why I put it in the 
equals the crow chud. It's cool. Um, which is Jordan? Then Logan's run, Les Miserables, Old Boyfriends, Raised the Titanic, Friends of Eddie Coyle, Yakuza Interiors, Smooth Member of the New York Shakespeare Festival, Mark Helgenberger, um, Saw Ben and Ryan, and Ryan's Hope from 82 to 86, Catherine Willard, <laughs> just be assigned, Current Scene Investigation, that's cool. Um, Richard Hurt. I kind of want to repeat the person. V in 84. Next up, Cronister. We have Spoiled. Hot of Fear. Part 26. Divided Andy Wolf and Brandon McConaughey Johnson. Dunn Grani. And the Meta Layers spoof of Daytime Soap Operas. Janet, played by Faye Grant. A housewife who is obsessed with the soap opera. There's only a somehow watch the program religiously. Played annoyed by her doctor husband, Leon, played by Adam. Our Shinx. She's more obsessed with the experimenting on a rabbit than spending time with her when she uses pictures of Chris and Lumbert on the show. Then it calls him Cableman Abel, played by Anthony Lepig, Lepig, Leah. To have a cute little song inspired by Where's All These Tomorrow? I mean, no nonsense main character, Pusha Monroe, played by Eda Moores, begins having a steamy affair with Abel by Leon Destructive work when Leon catches the two of them in act. He wants to be try to experiment on human subjects. Faye Grant, kind of one of the matches, she was Julie Parrish in the show V. Alan Rackiness, Miley Law, where he played Doug Brackman, Andy Paglia, um, Lantana and Palabo, who was living in the Tron, which is cool, Nita Morris, um, Jesus Christ Superstar, Seesaw and Nine, she was being a career in Broadway, and that was August 21st, 1991, last film. Um, 1918 during, oh, sorry, Yellow, played by Shock Suspense Stories number one, by, by, directed by Robert Zemeckis, written by Jim Thomas, John Thomas, and A.L. Katz and Gabriel Hasler, August 28th, 1991. During 1918, General Catherine's son, General Catherine was played by Turk Douglas, the cowardly lieutenant. Martin Cothrob, Eric Douglas, pressing discharge from the army. Martin's father mentions that he cannot discharge his son. He is transferred away from the line if he completes a specific mission. Unfortunately, Martin's cowardice prevents him from one of the of fire. <laughs> German troops are approaching and leaves him all to die while he runs for his life after dying sergeant. After the dying sergeant Ripper, played by Lance Hendrickson, exposes Martin's Ashton is called Yellow. Martin is arrested in court martial and sentenced to death by firing squad. And then before Martin's execution, General Carl tells his son he swapped his bullets with blanks to help Martin get to survive. Painless execution escapes into new life. Running face death with dignity. And then we have Dan Ackroyd in this too. Captain Billy. Kirk Douglas. Um, really famous actor, James Love and Martha Ivers, and Eric Douglas. He was the youngest of Kirk Douglas, and half-brother of Michael Douglas. Lance Hendrickson, alien franchise where he plays Bishop, and Frank Black in the Millennium and the X-Files. Dan Aykroyd, Ghostbusters. I don't recognize him for anything else. And this episode is only one longer than 30 minutes. Also, for the episode, we featured out produced as part of Two Fit Tis, this spinoff. And Zemeckis used the homage to pay tribute to 
Sonny Cooper's 1957 film, Paths of Glory, which also starred Kirk Douglas and features some of their themes. Evans Cool Two as father and son, Kirk Douglas, Kirk and Michael Douglas, er, Kirk and Eric Douglas, they are, are cool too because they're father and son in real life. That is it for this season. Uh, this season, I'm pleased to announce, like I said, August 27th for Tom HBO's new content, which is really cool. Um, then August, September 5th, I believe is when. September 5th for Atomic Season 4 of Tales from the Crypt, and I hope you all enjoy it. Bye-bye.